Hi guys, so um, I guess the reason you're here watching this video is because you're interested in electronics repair. Um, and that's what I'm here to, to help you to learn if, if, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, my name is Richard and basically I would describe myself as a, a hobbyist electronics repair engineer. Uh, I don't do this as a full-time job. In fact, personally, I believe it's very difficult to make enough money from this as a full-time job uh, to actually make a living from. Uh, so um, I have another business, uh, which is, you can see, the other part of the office here. And that business is really uh, earning my bread and butter. So this is something I do when I have a bit of spare time. Uh, something I enjoy doing. I get a lot of satisfaction from uh, repair work. And most of the repair work I do is actually based on the principle of buy to repair to sell. And if you're a beginner at this, or maybe have a little bit of experience before, I would recommend that that is a very, very good way to learn electronics repair. The beauty of doing it this way is that you're not under any pressure. Uh, you can fix things in, in your spare time. Maybe you're working in the day, you just have some time at the weekend. Maybe this is just an extra skill you want to learn. Um, so there's no pressure on the time scale to get something repaired for a certain date. You don't have customers hassling you. Is it ready yet? Is it are we there yet? Um, also, when you completely screw it up, which is going to happen sometimes, and, and the the thing you're trying to fix actually ends up worse than it was when you started, that's okay because this, this is something you bought yourself. You're hoping to fix it and sell it. If you mess it up, well, you haven't totally lost everything. As long as you're getting this stuff cheap enough, what you now have is a donor board you can use. Maybe you'll find something else of the same type you can repair, or you can just strip uh, components from it and use those, put them into your stock, and then later on, you have some spare parts for something else when you need them. So that's basically how I would, would suggest we, we go about this, and that's really how I want to teach people. Um, Okay, this is nothing new. There's guys and girls on uh, YouTube and on the internet uh, who do a very similar thing, so I'm doing nothing new here. But what I would like to do, and the reason I want to do this, I've wanted to do it for a long time, is uh, because I want to try and teach electronics from the point of view of repair. Uh, you don't need to learn a lot of theory. Yes, we need to understand some things about how components are working and, and what they are. But... The way I learned this, um, basically, just to, uh, spend a minute just telling you this, I started uh, with electronics in the 70s. Uh, you know, my father had bought me a little book how to build a transistor radio, and that got me interested. I never built the transistor radio. I mean, we had no money in them days. I couldn't even afford the bits. But for reading one book, I was down the library getting more books. And just got interested and gradually started uh, scrounging a soldering knife from somewhere from an uncle and started uh, to burn stuff when I'm trying to solder it. But, you know, you learn and, and so on. So that's how I got going in this. Uh, in the 80s, I actually did do a, a full-time 12-month uh, uh, course, what's called the City and Guilds. This is, I think, now you call this vocational training. At that time... Um, you could actually do these courses. So I took a year out and I am actually qualified as a radio and TV and video repair engineer. In them days, it was CRT TVs. Some still had valves in them, you know. So I was kind of in this crossover learning a lot of old technology. After that, yeah, I worked in electronics for about 10 years, full time. Uh, first with a major computer manufacturer in the UK. And then after that, I went into industrial electronic repair. And that is when I really started to learn repair because with the industrial electronics, we had no circuit diagrams, very little information. I mean, the internet didn't exist in, in those days. Uh, so you were very much on your own. And I think that is where you find who are the good engineers. I was successful at it um, uh, and it was a very enjoyable job. But okay, after that, I went self-employed. Um, and that's where I kind of discovered this area of buying stuff uh, to fix it, to sell it. Again, there was no nothing online then, uh, but I met people at electronics fairs where we were selling our computers we had at the time. And um, 
I found out where I could buy scrap monitors and printers and keyboards and various things. And, and, and that's what we did for a few years. Um, okay, so that's me. I said I spent a couple of minutes. Uh, from the mid to late 90s onwards, I completely moved away from electronics. And I didn't really touch it then till 2014. Uh, what got me back into this? Um, 2014. I was had a very successful business that was paying all the bills, didn't require a lot of attention. It was mainly subscription based, and I was getting bored. I wanted something to do, so I went back to something I did in my teens. I went back to running mobile discos, um, and I did that for a couple of years. But from the mobile discos, and obviously now we have the internet, and I'm on internet DJ forums, and I I kind of discovered that a lot of DJs were having faulty equipment you know things were breaking and uh, they were going wrong and they couldn't really find anybody to fix it so i started offering to repair and then like, people would post me things i'd fix so i'd go back on the forum uh, i'd put some information on there I was advising helping people and i thought hmm i remember back in the day i used to buy stuff and fix it and sell it so i started to look on the internet and i started buying the uh, disco lighting mixers amplified speakers these sort of things uh, and I started to fix them, and and some some of them uh, I was using on my own mobile disco. I was also renting a bit of equipment, so some I used for rental. And in, in uh, I mean, I was probably spending you know an hour one day, maybe a couple of hours sometimes a bit at the weekend, uh, in, in a little room upstairs at the house. And uh, after about a year, I charted up, and I'd made just by buying lighting and fixing and selling the stuff I didn't want for myself, which I kept quite a bit, I'd made about £6,000, £7,000, something like that over the year. I thought, hey, you know, actually, this is this is quite decent. It's, it's a nice hobby, and it makes you a bit of money. So, forward on to now. I'm no longer in the UK. Um, I left in 2016. Uh, started again with a business. Uh, I'm actually in the Canary Islands. And that's, you know, building a new business took time. I wasn't really doing much repair. But I started again. I'm working with bars and restaurants, hotels, uh, doing installation work, satellites and, and such. And uh, I went back and I started again, um, offering a few repairs because there seemed to be nobody around here that was doing that sort of work. And um, from that, you know, I end up, uh, I've got a reasonable business now. It's very quiet at the moment. We have this stupid pandemic going on. Uh, and I have time on my hands. Uh, so I, I went back into uh, buying to fix. Now, I'm not doing the mobile disco stuff now. Firstly, it's too heavy. Secondly, there's no mobile discos operating anyway. So I started to repair uh, computer motherboards. Obviously, we have a second-hand market here. Uh, and this is how I got. I go into the second-hand market, the car boot sale. Yeah, you, you probably have something like that where you live. And I'm looking around, and I'm buying, I'm just buying stuff, any old computers I can find, um, graphics cards. I'm, I'm just buying them for a few euros. Um, and we can, I thought, I'll see if I can fix this stuff. And I, and I started to fix it. And uh, I then discovered, uh, really, that vintage computer stuff is really, somehow it fetches really high money these days, far more than it did when it was new. And I realised there was a market for that. So that's what I do now. I go to the car boot sales on a Monday. Sometimes I, I, I buy stuff off eBay, uh, especially if I'm over in the UK and I can just bring it back with me. It's easier to get from there. Uh, and I take on some repairs. I fix a few laptops, um, amplifiers, basically anything. Uh, there's a radio station just across from me. I've, I've repaired a couple of these transmitters, which I've never even looked at one before. But hey, you know, it's electronics. Um, the strangest things I've fixed were... Um, a kiln for firing pottery from a guy here who makes hobby pottery to sell on the markets, and uh, a laminator uh, for a guy who uh, prints a uh, list of football matches and he puts them in, in the bars so they can see see what football they have on that week. Uh, so that, that's a couple of the stranger things I, I, I've looked at. Um, but mostly that's just odds and ends. So this repair work I do is a hobby, really. And it's, it is this buy, sell. So buy, repair, sell. So this is what I suggest you do. This is where I'm going to go with this. And this is what I do. And this is what I would like to 
show you guys, girls, and maybe you can see this is a hobby. This is something you can do in your spare time. You don't need a lot of equipment. I mean, I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to do just two two lines. From the beginning, I'm going to start and I'm going to show you uh, what equipment you need to start off with. What are the bare basics you need to start this sort of repair work? I'm going to talk about electronic components and circuits, but not from a technical point of view, uh, nothing mathematical. I'm going to explain them the circuits you're most likely to come across from a repair, a practical point of view. So we're going to do that. Um, but I'm guessing there's some people on here you probably do repair already, you know all this stuff. Uh, so at the same time as, as doing that, we're going to have on the channel practical repair jobs. So this will be stuff that I've picked up that weekend uh, at, at the car boot or I found online and thought, oh, I'll have that and, and try and fix it. And I'm gonna, we're going to do the practical. And this is where you really learn. You're only going to learn this by doing it. So that is the key. You've got to do it to learn it. Anyway, that's my uh, quick 11, 12 minutes. Uh, this is a new channel. I hope you enjoy it. At the moment, I have very basic uh, recording equipment. I'm just using the mobile phone, but I'm uh, very interested. If you guys like this, if you want me to do more of this, I'm happy to buy better equipment so I can show you better. So there we go. Uh, good luck. I hope you enjoy the journey. I hope you stay with it. And I hope you learn a skill uh, that, like I did that will see you through your entire life. This is something that will never go away. This is something that you can do yesteryear, you can do now, and you'll be able to do in the future. We're always going to have technology, and technology is always going to break. Okay, there we go. Uh, welcome to uh, the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.